Hey guys, welcome back. This is um, part two of histrionic personality disorder. And basically, what was I on? Um, I was on the difference between repression and suppression. So people with personality disorders have maladaptive behaviors that we use when we are in distress. So, with histrionic personality disorder, we like to bottle things up and not deal with them. But the problem with bottling things up is that they come back to you and they basically use an analogy of a beach ball and you're trying to push the beach ball underwater and it keeps popping back up. And basically what's going to happen with that is that you're going to try and keep repressing emotions from all these different events and eventually it's going to pop up when you least expect it and that's going to cause outbursts and anger or being upset and it's not going to make any sense to other people but they don't know that you're bottling it up so basically there's a distinction between repression and suppression. So repression is an unconscious process, which means you don't even know you're doing it, really. It just happens. It's like breathing. And suppression is a conscious one. So while repression has all the negative consequences indicated above, so that's in part one, all that stuff that I read about the consequences of HPD, that's in there. Um, suppression can be a very helpful skill in a lot of circumstances. So here's an example of why suppression would be a good thing to do. If your coworker does something that makes you feel really, really angry, it's helpful and adaptive to be able to intentionally suppress that feeling in order to avoid getting into a confrontation at work. The key is having the skills to process and cope with that feeling later on, such as by discussing it with someone you trust. So you're not repressing it, you're not trying to bottle it up forever, you're just keeping it down until you can release it later. So what else do I need to know about repression and how do I deal with it? So what are repressed emotions even? When you are an emotionally repressed person, you're probably not aware of that fact, and I wasn't. But the truth is that this is a condition in which you will find it most imp find it almost impossible to express your feelings, especially when you're uncomfortable. It's not just that you hide your emotions, you're unconsciously trying to avoid and run away from them because you don't know how to handle them properly. But these feelings don't disappear in the process. Instead, they bottle up inside of you and cause you numerous problems, which you don't even realize. If everything you've read so far applies to you, congratulations. You've taken the first step to improving your well-being. What you're about to read below will help you learn more about the symptoms almost every emotionally repressed person faces. Additionally, you will also learn 10 helpful strategies to deal with this condition. So. What are the signs and symptoms of repressed emotions? You don't listen to yourself. When was the last time you really paid attention to yourself? The last time you had some one-on-one -on -one talk and the last time that you followed, the last time you really followed your heart. Okay. One of the first signs that you're emotionally repressed is the fact that you aren't in touch with yourself. 
You don't carry out any self-reflection and you aren't listening to your inner voice. Even when you notice that there's something going on and that you're feeling really bad, you don't get curious about the cause of this emotional energy you're feeling. Instead, you choose to ignore it, thinking that it'll magically disappear that way. You're embarrassed by anger and sadness. If you were socialized as a man when you were a kid, you were probably taught that boys don't cry. You were probably taught that real men are rarely sad and that they always deal with life by standing firmly on their two feet. You were probably taught that being vulnerable and showing your weaknesses is not a manly thing to do. Or sorry, is not a manly thing and with time, you have adopted this pattern of behavior. On the other hand, if you were socialized as a woman, you were probably taught that girls should never lose their temper. You might have been told that you weren't behaving like a lady every time you showed your anger or nervousness. You were probably taught that you should even be pleasant and polite and prioritize other people's feelings and needs over your own. And even though you might not be aware of this, these views shaped you to be the person you are today. When you were a little child, you were taught that anger and sadness are negative emotions, and now as an adult, you are ashamed of them. But in reality, there is no such thing as good and bad emotions. Whatever you are feeling, you are entitled to feel, and you shouldn't judge yourself for experiencing a certain emotion. Okay, well that's good. So you hear that everybody? Even if you're mad or you're upset, it's okay. You can be mad or upset. Everybody gets mad or upset. Nobody can be happy 24-7. Hmm. Yeah, I need to work on that. <clears throat> you are never you never talk about your emotions. Another important symptom of emotional repression is the fact that you don't share your emotions with anyone. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying that you should go around and talk about your deepest fears, hopes, aspirations, and darkest secrets to everyone who comes your way, but the truth is that you surely have a few close friends and family members. Nevertheless, you don't talk to them about your true feelings either. Maybe you're a talkative person, but when you think about it, the content of what you share is probably more focused on facts and not your feelings about things. Even when you cry, you never do it in front of others. I don't. Instead, you prefer dealing with all your stuff on your own without involving anyone else. Have you, no, no, no. Have you ever thought, why is this so? Are you ashamed to feel? Do you think people around you will ridicule, ridicule your feelings? Do you trust them? Or do you think that they might use your vulnerability against you? Yes, I do. <laughs> You're guarded. Have people called you guarded in the past? I'm not talking about the fact that one person told you this. I'm talking about the fact that you were known to be a closed and guarded person. And that almost everyone thinks this way about you. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying this is a bad characteristic of yours. Because it is simply a part of your personality. I am not telling you to wear your heart on your sleeve all the time. But the truth is that this, quali this quality of yours must have some kind of background. I know that you are probably trying to protect your heart from getting broken by being overly careful with people. But the fact is that you've built giant walls around yourself and almost no one is allowed in. You might not be aware of this, but the truth is that you often appear as if you're wearing steel armor that cannot be shattered. Yes! 
You are always all right. One of the main characteristics of emotionally repressed people is the fact that they will never say out loud when something is bothering them. Instead, when people ask you, oh my gosh, instead, when people ask how you've been or if you need some help, you always answer that you are all right and that you don't need anything. But let's face it, we all have good days and bad days. We all have days when we are anything but all right. Nevertheless, you prefer ending a conversation about your feelings by assuring everyone you are okay instead of giving them the chance to dig through your emotions. But have you ever asked yourself if you're lying to everyone around you by doing this or if you're lying to yourself? Are you trying to convince yourself that there is nothing to be worried about and that you're perfectly fine, even when deep down you know you're not? The answer is probably yes. And this is a clear indicator that you're repressing your true feelings. Okay, so the one coming up is me. To a T. I am the queen of this. You hold grudges. I am the queen. I have grudges from grade one that I have held on to. Grade one. Yeah. And that grudge is from, or was it kindergarten? No, it was kindergarten, sorry. This idiot. His name was Tegan, and he used to wear army clothes all the time. And he stepped on my fingers when we were cleaning up the classroom because before school ended, we would have to clean up garbage on the floor, put the chairs back, put the tables away. And I was on my hands and knees, and I was grabbing a piece of paper, and he stepped on my fingers. And obviously I'm five, so I start crying and blah, blah, blah. And he didn't even apologize. And ever since then, I always gave that kid attitude. I never wanted to play with him. If we were doing a group project and he was my partner, I wouldn't let him have any of the work. None. I'd just carry on the project as if he wasn't even there. I'd ignore him, he wouldn't listen to him, nothing. I hated him. So, I'm the queen of grudges. I do not like my sister-in-law. I do not like my mother-in-law. I do not like my other sister-in-law, and I never will. I feel like those grudges will be held until the day I die. But there is a very good reason for those, and I will explain that after okay when you hold back your emotions you don't have a have you have a habit of holding grudges for a long time even over small things the truth is that you don't process when someone close to you harms you or hurts you because you're certain that the feeling of disappointment or repressed anger or hurt will go away if you choose to ignore it. This approach only works in the short term because your feelings keep piling up and you end up acting overly resentful. Yeah. You don't forgive people because of your inability to face what happened in your relationship with them. Even if you're not aware of it, the truth is that with time, you became a prisoner of these feelings and the only person you're causing harm is yourself. Remember, forgiveness brings liberation, and it's better to do it sooner rather than later. Okay. I don't know if you guys will agree with me, but some things I feel are unforgivable. Like, you come to my house, 
this was my sister-in-law, okay? So I had an IUD in at this time and I don't know what happened, but it punctured the right side of my, my uterus wall and I got pregnant. And because I had the IUD in, I ended up with an ectopic pregnancy. And I remember I had this feeling of being pregnant, but I never took a test. And then one day I thought it was a really bad period. And honestly, it felt like labor. It was like that urge to push. There was a lot of blood. It was painful. I remember taking baths for a week and just trying to push out whatever was in there because I had this urge of doing it and then I'm like it's got to be the IUD I got to get it out I was gonna pull it out by myself my boyfriend was like no you can't do that you need to go to the hospital so this was a week later and the day before I went to the hospital she came over with her friend and started partying outside or whatever she was really loud I was in a lot of pain like excruciating pain and I said I don't want you guys here I don't want visitors here and she yelled at me and she's like I'm visiting my dad I'm like I don't care go I don't want you here this is my house too I pay the rent he should have said something I'm in pain I want you out she didn't leave the next day later, I found out I had a ruptured ectopic pregnancy and I needed to go in for surgery right away. I go into surgery, I lost a liter of blood, and yeah, so whatever. Her other friend doesn't like me, I don't give a shit, I don't like her either. But then she has the audacity to come to my house again when we're moving. And me and him were trying to get clean off heroin because his other sister came over and brought heroin and got us addicted again. And I kicked her out and I said, not again. This is not happening again. She tried to come back, say she was homeless. I said, I don't care. You got me on drugs again. You ruined my clean time. You're done. She comes to my house. And she starts blaming me that he's on heroin. And it's my fault. My fault. When her stupid sister came here with the drugs in the first place. And she was calling me names. Calling me a whore. Calling me blah 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 blah. And then my mom comes because I need her help move us out and I swear to God my mother almost punched her fucking face in and she went and she hid. I will not forgive her. She still hasn't said sorry to me. There's some things that you can't forgive. And that's one of them. Okay. So you've been accused, back to the thing, you've been accused of being passive aggressive. Have people accused you of being passive-aggressive? If the answer is yes, there's a possibility that this is a consequence of your repressed emotions. It's difficult for you to face problems head-on. You have a hard time telling people what's bothering you at the exact moment when you feel bad. And so, and you don't know how to argue productively. I don't know how to argue productively, but I'm not passive aggressive. I'm just aggressive. I know that. So I don't have this problem. But maybe some of you are passive aggressive. So this is for you. But everything you're feeling is kept somewhere deep inside of you. And it doesn't magically go away if you act like it isn't there. So sometimes you unconsciously punish the ones you love by ignoring them or giving them the silent treatment when they do something that bothers you. No, I don't do that. You blow up over small things. Yes, I do. Another sign that you're bottling up your emotions is the fact that you have a habit of blowing up over small things. 
If you think about it, you'll probably realize that none of your fights with your loved ones are about big things that are important to you. Instead, you repress your true emotions about these big things and instead lose it over the smallest possible thing. And of course, everyone thinks that you're overreacting. Okay, that's nice. Everyone is surprised, since you're known to be someone who doesn't tend to react to the bigger things, let alone blow up, blow them out of proportion. So, why is this small thing suddenly such a big deal? But what people don't know is that your reactions always have a deeper background. And to be honest, they can't know it either. Nobody can read your mind and nobody can magically know when you're bothered by something unless you verbalize it. Yeah, I do this. You can't expect the people close to you to understand that you're attacking them now for something they did last month. Yes, this is what I do a lot and I'm not proud of it. I tend to do that. I tend to react over the dumbest things and yeah, it'll be over something months before. So anyways, that's all I got time for today. Um, I'm going to do a part three of this because I didn't expect this to be so long. So um, thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys later. Okay, bye.